here in this lovely leafy suburb called Pitville Circus in wonderful Cheltenham. Cheltenham, the sort of place you would bring your family for a holiday, at least for half an hour anyway. As you can see, it's been slightly changed by the motor vehicle, but in other ways, it's still as it was many years ago. Cheltenham is a home of retired colonels, the home of lovely Regency architectures such as here, the health-giving waters at the spa, the races, of course, where people go every month to go and see the horse racing, Brian Jones, Rolling Stone, he once lived here. Then Gustav Holst, that great classical composer. Charles Sturt. Ch yes, Charles Sturt. Charles Sturt, the uh, Australian uh, explorer. Uh, the circus take two. I'm standing here in this leafy suburb of Pitville, in, of course, Cheltenham. Cheltenham is oh, I'm standing here in this leafy suburb, Pitville, near Cheltenham. Cheltenham, of course, is the standing here in Pitville in Cheltenham, the cultural centre of the Cotswolds. Cheltenham, of course, is renowned for its retired colonels, its health-giving spa waters, Cheltenham Ladies' College, the music festival, Brian Jones, the Rolling Stone, Gustav Holst, the composer, Charles Sturt! Charles Sturt, the Australian explorer. Um, uh, Cavendish House! Cavendish House, the Australian explorer. No, no, no. Department no, no. store. Charles Sturt, the famous department store. No, no. no? Cavendish no. House, Ca the famous department Cavendish store. Cavendish House, the famous department store. Cut, cut. The area has produced some colourful characters. William Pitt lived here once. Nicholas Ridley, not so far away. Sir Charles Irving, of course. Uh, Robert Kennedy. Diana Dawes. The famous astronaut Yuri Gagarin. Gagarin once flew over here. You can see the trails up there. However, let's go back 17 years to 1973. Something shook this sleepy town when five young men moved into this incarceration point just over here, the tower. Uh, so, five reasonably sane men brought together by fate, economic necessity, and the fear of severe parental beatings were incarcerated here. We're still trying to piece together 17 years later exactly what happened. And because of the elapse of time, those events are not clear. It is obvious, however, that those people, having passed through these doors, were never quite the same again. However, what is certain is that I, slightly Dulani, Gaga, when Spanish ordered a toolbox, completely out to lunch. Miracles of modern technology, aided by this microphone, I managed to track down one of the first former inmates of Tower House. Unfortunately, he didn't survive the process of incarceration too well. to go through the doors of Tower House relatively unscathed. Now, these days, he is a pillar of the community. And to protect his not inconsiderable reputation, 
he has agreed to talk to me in this leafy suburb of Cheltenham, providing he wears a paper bag on his head. Also, in true investigative journalistic style, to protect his anonymity, I've agreed to call him just Mr. Smith. Let's start the interview, Mr. Smith, but can I just ask you to hold this, please? Yeah, all right, okay, yeah. <clears throat> can you possibly tell me anything about those Tower House days? Uh, now, just go at your own pace. I know it's upsetting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, not really, no. Fine. Cut! Cut!